As a dungeon master, you're going to spend hours upon hours building your world, setting up all the narrative branches of your story, but I don't think there's anything more important in a D&D game than characters. Characters make up the game, usually on the player's side, but also if you ask a lot of your players the things they remember most about a campaign, it will usually involve character interactions. That time they really sat down and roleplayed for the first time, digging into each other's backstories, or when they chose the perfect one-liner to say to the villain who'd been on their case the whole game, or when they had to attend the funeral of the mute gnome with a funny dance. Character moments, interactions, they forge the greatest things that D&D creates. And while having a grand story and world will get your players hooked, it's the people within that world, including themselves, that more often than not will really motivate them to want to save it. Or destroy it, if you're one of those evil doers. If you're a veteran D&D player, you almost definitely know how to make your character interesting. Focus on the front story as well as the back story, ensure that they're willing to work with a party, and even hook them to a place or story event in the world, if you're a nerd like that. But, as a DM, you might be wondering how to make those NPCs, both hostile and friendly, that go beyond just feeling like hurdles to overcome or resources to squeeze for what they're worth. You don't want your players seeing through these NPCs as nothing more than quest givers or merchants. You need them to feel like people if you want this world of yours to come to life. Essentially, how do you make yourself feel like a strange, Lovecraftian being full of hundreds of different personalities, each feeling like a proper person? Hello ghouls and gals, I'm back again, and I'm here to go into detail on what I believe makes a compelling, memorable NPC. It's something that I really believe takes your games up a notch, as with strong supporting characters you can help the players shine while also giving them people that can ground your world and stories to make them more relatable. We're not going specifically over villains here, but there are some tips that can help hostile NPC creation too. Usually your big bad or a stepping stone to get to them is going to have some cheat codes to stick in your players' heads. They'll kill a party member or someone dear, or they're just the person who wants to destroy the world and needs to get rid of the party first to do that. On the other hand, shopkeepers, bar staff and the random people you see on the street could easily be forgotten as they don't necessarily have a collision course with the party and when the party move on to somewhere else, they'll likely get a whole new lot of faces to remember. However, like with your villains, you do have some easy cheat codes to levelling up your NPCs. I'm going to first go over some simple tips that immediately get your players hooked on someone new. The first and most obvious of those tips is a funny voice. If you've got a specific voice, or even a silly character trait in mind, that's going to stick out. A city guard who is trying to become an actor and wants the party to review his headshots, for example. Or an innkeep who only accepts even numbers of gold, silver and copper. You'll be walking a fine line between what's annoying and and what's endearing, if you're like me that is, but hey, it's a strong first step. These little traits can act as a little seed you plant for the character from which an entire personality grows. That voice or that quirk is enough for the party to then have their interest piqued, and from there they can find out more about the character and the world through that interest they show. It's an icebreaker, if you will, something to grab the attention of your players so that they can get more information further down the line. Now that we've done a simple tip to get started, I'd like to dig a little deeper and talk about why NPCs really matter most. It's important to remember that each of your NPCs is in the world to serve a player-focused purpose. It sounds obvious, but this world, your characters, don't exist, not without the party's interaction. And so each NPC is really just a device to further a plot or give a bit of information. Most of the time, they're both. An old dwarf lady might grant the party shelter on a rainy night so that she can then warn them of werewolves prowling the surrounding area and the village elder who refuses to do anything about them. Your NPCs are therefore a great asset to have as they act as this conduit for your world building, which makes it all the more important that they are memorable. If no one wants to interact with the NPCs you have because they fail to be interesting or don't feel like they have anything to offer, then you won't get to reveal all that lore you spent most of the time writing down. And so, there's your why, but now let's go back to the how and the what. As I've said, if you've got the wackiness to hand, whether that be in voices or random character traits, use it. I find that most people are very welcoming to light-hearted stuff when they play D&D, and even in the dark, grittier campaigns. Some silly stuff is bound to come in, as most players aren't going to enjoy being gloomy for hours at a time. That being said, not everyone can be weird and wonderful, nor should every NPC be an absolute buffoon unless you're running a comedy campaign. Also, as mentioned before, these comedy traits usually only go so far as planting the seed for what you want this character to be. 
You might be able to nail a Homer Simpson impression, for example, but then you'll need to think of fantasy Homer in the world. How does he come across the party? What does he do for them? Does he have any information they might find useful? All these questions and more take that wacky NPC from something that feels like a video game, robot-like NPC, to an actual character that exists in the world. The more you can make your NPCs come across as real people, the better you'll be able to immerse your players. It's about burying their purpose behind who they are, if that makes sense. Sometimes this is really easy to do. Let's go back to Homer and say he is a blacksmith, for example. Then his use for the players at a very basic level is going to be to provide arms and armour for them. A simple transactional purpose with a funny voice attached if you've got one in the bank. For most of your NPCs, this level of detail is fine. You come up with who and what they are, like a human blacksmith, then from there you're pretty much good to go. But what about key NPCs, the people who the players need to meet and the characters who need to make an impact on them? These types of NPCs can range from villains to benefactor type characters, those people that give them their rewards for quests and will come back again and again throughout their adventures. We're not going to dive too deeply into villains here, as I said, but I will say that my own strategy is largely the same for both hostile and friendly NPCs at this point. All I do is develop those NPCs as if they were a player character. Or, if you like, I make them their own person. When you sit down to write a backstory, you ideally want to know three things about your character. Who they were before now, how do they get to the starting position in the campaign, and who do they want to be? The same can and should be applied to your important NPCs. Let's bring back home of the blacksmith, shall we? As I said before, if he's just a guy that gives the players weapons in a village they'll stop by for a night, there's not much reason to give him 15 brothers, all of which he lost, tragically, in battle. If our blacksmith is someone you've marked to be key, however, either he has an important objective for the players or he's full of information on the local area, at that point we're going to need to draw up some more details to bring this character to life. Let's say Homer lived in this village his whole life. He's seen its ups and downs, but wouldn't trade his home for any other. When he was a boy, he wanted to be a guard or protector of the people, but a leg injury and his skills with a hammer soon turned him to the life of a blacksmith. Right now, he's happy with things as they are. He has a young family and is able to provide for them, even if he is a little suspicious of the new elderman. All he hopes for in the future are for things to stay as they are. And so, from that short, simple exercise, what did we learn about Homer the blacksmith? Well, he's got a good heart, as proven by his desire to protect people and his love for his family. He's also loyal, as shown by the fact he's always stayed in the village. Finally, he's cautious around change, and so perhaps the players could create conflict, either on purpose or accidentally with Homer, by causing a great change to come to the village, for better or worse. Our blacksmith might not be the best example, as you don't really expect them to have grand plans for the future, but the point of that was to show how NPCs should be thought of. They should have their own arcs, even if they are small and disinteresting. They don't all need to be written down, nor do they all need to be very detailed, but understanding who an NPC is can be incredibly useful in creating that connection between them and the players. Those connections can branch out as well to other NPCs. If Homer has stayed in the village all his life, it makes sense that other key figures will have opinions on him and they'll know him well. But if you need another example, and one that isn't created by yours truly, then let's take a look over to one of the best D&D games ever created, Baldur's Gate 3. While there are plenty of NPCs we could take a look at in Baldur's Gate 3, my prime example of a brilliant NPC is Roland. We could have used the arcs of the game's followers, but in my opinion, they are all party members, whereas Roland is definitely a non-playable character, as you'd see in a D&D campaign. But he's still a person with his own arc. First off, even before we meet him, at the beginning of the game he has his own aspirations of becoming a Grand Wizard. He wants to become a mage of renown and is seeking his fortune in Baldur's Gate. When you first meet Roland, he has quite the ego and doesn't really think much of you. Now, this might not be the best way to create a lasting relationship with your D&D party, as I found in my experience players are rare to try and make friends with someone that antagonises them immediately, but each is to their own. After Roland definitely survives Act 1, just like the rest of the tieflings, you'll next see him defeated at Last Light Inn. He's lost his siblings and he's kicking himself because he can't do anything to get them back. He can then be found wandering the Shadow Cursed Lands and will need to be saved again. Note how Roland has his own story playing out, but the party is intrinsic to each step of the way. Even in Act 3, when he's gone off to study under Laroican, he can only achieve his true potential with your help. On each step of the way, Roland sticks to his own goals. 
he is his own person, but as he's not really a person, he can't do these things alone. It's a great example of enforcing player agency, as if let's say Roland decided he would get stronger after Act 1 and was able to rescue the tieflings on his own as well as take over Laroken's tower later in the game, you might be happy to see him grow as a character, but there would be that feeling creeping up of what's the point in us being here? Why should we bother adventuring when Roland and everyone else gets on fine without us? That leads me on to another point of contention among NPC creation, and that's characters who are stronger than the players. We're not talking a level 20 DMPC here who strides into battle ahead of the party, defeating a dragon way above their level just to show how cool they are. We all know that's lame, but I think you can still have a character that is of equal strength or stronger than the party members, especially in the early levels, so long as you have a genuine purpose to include them in the game. Of course, this depends on your players, as some of them might not feel comfortable sharing the limelight or feeling as if they're not the best guys around for the job, but if it's all okay with the people at your table, I think a strong NPC is a great way to prove that your world is a living, breathing space. It's a world with millions of people in it, of all varying strengths and weaknesses. Your players are the protagonists of their story, but that doesn't necessarily make them the greatest heroes that ever were. At least, not immediately. By the end of your campaign, you'll want that effect, but early on, there's no harm in having a powerful wizard show up who can give them advice, or suggest ways for them to deal with their problems. As was the case before, it's all about the purpose behind the NPC that makes them compelling. What need does the world or story have for them? Does this retired hero who still has one good fight in him fall to a villain to make the situation seem that much more hopeless for the party? Or do they at first seem like a great helper only to turn out to have fallen to corruption? They can also just be powerful shopkeepers with access to magic items so the players don't get tempted to steal them. When you're making an NPC like this, the biggest question you've got to ask is are you just making a character you want to play? We all fall victim to it as a DM as we rarely get to be the characters we want to be, but it's not fair to then shove them at our players hoping they'll be cool or interesting. This might sound controversial, but I think more so than the world or even the story that characters make Dungeons and & Dragons and your NPCs as a DM are the primary device through which players will be able to learn about your story and world. Very rarely are you going to describe a carving on a stone and have a player ask you what the significance of that carving is to the history of the world. Even then, there's likely going to be a skill check involved which doesn't guarantee you get to spew all the lovely world building you've done. Instead, if you treat every NPC you have like a puzzle piece which helps create a larger, fuller picture of your story and the world you've made, you can really create a cast of compelling, believable side characters that will have players coming back to that generic town or village just so they can see one of their former friends again. To make these compelling, unforgettable NPCs, you've got to first outline the purpose that they serve. Some of these are much simpler than others, and for your generic shopkeepers, innkeeps, and people who aren't necessarily cornerstones of your plot, you just need a very simple outline of who they are and what they can offer. For those cornerstones though, you need to make them feel less like creations for a game and more like people you can get to know. It's worth thinking of who they were, who they are, and what they want to be. They can have ambitions and a story of their own to complete, one that might not immediately seem like it concerns the players, but one that shouldn't be progressed too much without them. For a character to come alive, they need to be consistently having something to do, something to work away at in the background, but make sure your players can support or prevent that character from completing the next steps of their journey. It's somewhat of a balancing act and another bit of thankless DM work, as I assure you, you'll always know more about your NPCs than your players. But it's not about vomiting all the information you have on them in an introductory monologue. Instead, you're creating the feeling that every question you could ask an NPC has its answer, which makes them feel alive without you ever needing to prove it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As always, as a small channel, a like, comment, or subscription helps loads. I'm still coming to grips with this new topic of D&D as well, so if you've got any thoughts of your own on how to make NPCs great, let me know. Until then, I'll see you soon, ghouls and gals.